Please note that in this show, you might hear graphic descriptions or language that may not be appropriate for everyone. Listener discretion advised. My son said he didn't understand cloning. I said, that makes two of us. Welcome to Parentless Podcast. I am your host, Stephanie Relaford. On this show, we're going to be speaking with others who have experienced the loss of one or both of their parents or parental figures. As we heard in episode 12 with Louisa Bellardi, being parentless is like an island, and I don't know how to swim. Thank you for being my life jacket. My name is Rob Kenny. Uh, I am. I started a YouTube channel in uh, 2020 <laughs> when, during the pandemic, and I just did it to thinking I was going to help a few people. Uh, and now I have over 3 million subscribers. Uh, I call them my kids. And since that time, I've also written a book. Uh, so my life has uh, <laughs> taken on a whole new turn that I that was totally unexpected. So tell me, why are we here? Who is your person that passed away? Yeah, so um, I, you know, I'm a little older. I'm 57 myself. Uh, my dad. My story uh, is that my dad actually left when I was 14. I'm one of eight kids, and I'm number seven. And my dad came home and just said he was done raising kids. There's a lot that led up to that, um, and I share that in my book. And both of my parents, you know, my dad ended up dying when he was 87. My mom died fairly young. Uh, she had um, had some anxiety problems, some mental health issues, and she didn't get good help for it. Uh, my heart goes out to her for that. I share that in my book as well. Uh, you know, it was the 70s when she was struggling with mental health. And so she turned to um, alcohol uh, to try to, you know, numb the pain, I, I guess, so to speak. And yeah, so she didn't unfortunately live very long, I think, because of the alcohol abuse. Okay. Um, when did your mom pass away? She died in 86 um, and she was born in 27. So she was actually 58. She would have been 59 that year. To give a little bit of context for um, the history of kind of where I'm, <laughs> where I'm at is, uh, and I, I do share this story in my book. I, I, um, I'm again, I'm one of eight kids and my parents, I think, started out really well. There were six older kids all born in Kansas and my mom was one of 12 kids. Uh, and so I think she envisioned her life being that she would grow up amongst uh, all her siblings and all the kids and, you know, one big extended happy family and all the cousins would grow up together. And my dad's uh, work dried up in Wichita. And so my dad began to look for work. And so it, it's interesting to look back as an adult now and kind of put yourself in the position of both of them, um, which really helps me to get my head around it. And so I think of my dad as, you know, having six kids. Uh, yikes, you know, uh, I don't have a job. What am I going to do? I got to provide for my family. Um, and so he he was an aeros aerospace engineer. And so, you know, limited job opportunities. And so he ended up moving us to New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. And that's where I was born. He moved there for the um, space project uh, with Boeing. And so we lived there for a couple of years and then he ended up finding another job up here in Seattle. The Seattle area is where I still live now. And uh, with the 747, back when the 747 was just starting. And so he moved us all the way up here. And so I think all that took a big toll on my mom because, you know, she never really saw us settle, settling away from Kansas and we're in New Orleans, you know, so it's cross country, so to speak, a, a few states. It's a and then, world. yeah, okay. and then really cross country all the way up to Seattle, you know. And so, fast forward a little bit, you know, there were some struggles because of my mom. I just don't think she ever saw us <laughs> staying in Seattle. And my dad was like, "You, you know, you got to come to grips with the fact that we're staying in Seattle." So it caused a um, trouble in their marriage. And um, like I said, my mom struggled with some mental health issues. And so she turned to, to alcohol. She went, and I share this in my book too, she went to a therapist, you know, therapy wasn't so great in the seventies. And so she went to a therapist and the therapist said, uh, oh, Barbara, just buy a new hat. Um, that was his way of trying to help her, <laughs> help her move on. And 
you know, that's, uh, it's painful to look back. I feel so sorry for my mom. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I know that's something that you are a big advocate of now is the mental health part and seeking that help and, and those resources. So that's good. I am. I want to remove the stigma from it, you know, cause I, um, personally speaking for myself, I, you know, I've struggled with anxiety, my, you know, at times where I'm just fight or flight. I want to just flee at what's going on inside my head. I'm freaking out here. Um, and then after a while I got to know some, you know, people who I had respected and admired. And, and then I'd say, you know, and I kind of would open up to them about my anxiety. And then like, they would say, well, I'm actually seeing the therapist. Well, you are, you know, <laughs> can you, you know, I wish you people would be more vocal about it. It's, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm trying to remove the stigma or help, you know, the best with my platform, remove the stigma from mental health. I think, you know, we shouldn't suffer in silence uh, because there's help. There's help out there. Let's get it so you can, you know, get the resources and the tools. You know, we go to the gym and work out and stuff. And meanwhile, we're, you know, hurting on the inside. We need to, you know, remove the stigma of mental health. Right. And even just sharing your story. Um, there are a lot of people with stories. Not everybody can share them. So that's why those of those of you that can share them are really appreciated. And that's, you know, with with your your dad's story and the mental health, like everything all together. So definitely thank you for for having that platform and sharing your story. And because of your following, we know that, you know, you are helping people. Um, they are very drawn to your story, I believe, and they can relate. So that's great that you, you're you here for everyone. Yeah, well, thanks. I'm just trying to do the best I can with the abil- you know, the abilities that God has given me and the platform I've been given. Um, I think I have a responsibility to, you know, to do the best I can. You know, who, who knows how long this platform, you know, I'll have this platform. It could be gone tomorrow, you know, who knows? And so um, I want to do the best I can and remain, uh, keep my integrity too. You know, um, I get offers for sponsorships all the time um, on a weekly basis. And I have to filter those and say, this isn't, you know, I don't want to be a walking billboard. I, if it's useful though, I want to, you know, I'm happy to promote it as long as it fits with what I'm trying to do, because I want to maintain my connection with my subscribers or my kids, as I call them, you know, um, because I'm trying, you know, the channel will start it out trying to be a resource, trying to share stuff that, you know, my wife and I learned over the years um, that I would then also give this advice to you because that's something I would give to my own kids. And so if I'm selling something, you know, um, but if I find a product that's good, I think I, you know, it, I would share, share it with my own kids. I'm going to share it with my subscribers because I, you know, I, I'm happy to put an endorsement on something that I've had personal experience with that's good to give people, you know, well, what kind of drill should I buy? Well, this is a good brand. It's been good for me. Here you go. I, you know, I would tell it to my own kids. So I think I don't have any shame sharing that with my subscribers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And and that's something that I liked too, when I was exploring your channel is that it's, it's easy with recognition to kind of get off track a little bit. And what I see from, from your videos and what you're trying to relay is you're very much so I want to stay on track. This is why I was here. This is how I will continue. So I like mm-hmm. to think it's, it's a Midwest thing. And maybe because you can, you know, your family had Kansas connections. I was born in Kansas. I'm from there. So <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're going to tie it in that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, the heartland, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I think uh, there's something to be said about that. It's interesting because my my sister, my oldest sister, you know, is very reflective and thinks about stuff. And she said, you know, what, we're kind of unique, are the siblings, uh, because we have that heartland experience but we also have my dad worked at boeing and he was an executive at boeing right so we kind of have a mixture of where you can relate to a lot of different people right just because of our our experience with our parents Mm -hmm. yeah that's good so i want to um so the reason i started this show is my dad passed away when i was 13 and Mm -hmm. your your dad and then my mom passed away later on but but I've really been thinking about that difference is, you know, my dad died and your dad left, but he, your dad chose to leave you. I would imagine that leaves a lasting impact on a young person. Um, so can you tell me about that time and kind of what you remember and how you feel? 
Yeah, it was tough. You know, I, I, I again, I have to go back um, as an adult and looking back on things. My dad started out well. My mom started out well, uh, you know, um, and then things just took a toll when we were up uh, up here and with my mom turning to turning to alcohol and my dad um, just kind of numbing himself. Uh, he ended up getting custody of us, uh, but he didn't really want us is how I was able to kind of figure it out. And then he ended up meeting another woman which kind of numbed him, I think, even more. And then I think he saw us more as not a blessing, but a burden, you know. Um, and I, I, I think he kind of wanted to shed that. <laughs> you know, he's ready. He was kind of ready to move on, but we're still young. You know, we still need our parents. And my mom couldn't take care of us. And my dad got custody. And then, yeah, after about a year, there was a time, you know, this was the 70s. And so for about a year, um, we lived where my dad would come home and load us up with groceries and they'd be gone for a week. And us younger siblings just kind of, you know, I learned how to forge my dad's signature so that if I was actually sick, I could write myself a note, <laughs> you know, this was the 70s again. So things have changed since since then, my dad would be in big trouble um, these days if, if he was found out. And the neighbors kind of knew and looked out for us. Uh, but yeah, so then he finally, you know, came home and said, you know, I'm done raising kids is how he put it. And so he said, you know, either the older siblings need to take you in or take in the younger siblings or um, they're going to go to foster home. And, you know, I didn't know what that mean, meant at the time, you know, uh, but thankfully my brother, Rick, who was nine years older than me, took me in, him and his wife, he was newly married. Uh, they were married in October and then I went to live with them in January and they, you know, my heart goes out to them, <laughs> you know, taking on a 14 year old and, you know, at the time, 23, 24 seems old. It's just a kid. My son's 26 now. I can't imagine him taking on a a 14 year old uh, kid, you know, so, and we lived in a trailer. It was an eight by 35 trailer. I've always called it a mobile home, but really it was a trailer um, because they, you know, they were just trying to get started out, didn't have a whole lot of money. They were trying to save some money up. They bought this trailer and then suddenly they have a 14 year old living with them in that tiny trailer and they're newlyweds, you know, so right. my heart again goes out to, to them. So thankfully they stepped up and, you know, we're best friends today. Isn't it, isn't it interesting how when you're in it and you're at that age, you don't have the perspective. And then once you're an adult and once you get older, you can really, really appreciate so many more things. So that's one of the things that we like to talk about as well. So your dad left. You went to stay with your brother. Tell me more about that. As a 14 year old, you know, after feeling the pain of that, I, you know, determined as a 14 year old, you know, what, I don't know, you can't really set too hard and fast goals, but I determined that, you know, if I ever had the opportunity to have kids of my own, that I would never do that to my kids. And so my wife and, you know, I'm married well. And so my wife and I, our priority was always the kids. Um, and we poured a lot into them, you know, uh, as, as they, as they grew. Um, and I would say too, you know, I've, I've shared this on my channel, thinking about perspective of, you know, when you're 14, it seems like, oh, what am I going to do? And the next thing you know, you're 18, and then you're 25, and then you're 35, and then you're 57. You know, I mean, at time, time marches on, and you can get in your own head and get caught into this thing that, oh, I can't see where this is going. You know, this is bad. But really, I've, I've found right around the corner might be some amazing thing. So, you know, uh, you know, maintain that perspective of, you know, kind of looking forward and what, what can be rather than the situation that you might be in. Cause I've found, you know, things are temporary. You're in a, you're, you might, and I've been in sales for almost 30 years and I've had to navigate that of, wow, this is amazing. I just landed this great account or, Oh no, I just lost a good account, you know? And so trying to, you know, the temporary highs and lows, you got to be able to navigate those uh, if you're going to be able to maintain your sanity, really. Do you think that, you know, when, when your dad left and you had to navigate that, then did that set you up for your future having to navigate everything else? Yeah, I think I it kind of cut out a little bit still, but yeah, just trying to nav navigate things because my, my dad leaving, I, I, uh, 
yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think we, you know, you're made up of all your experiences uh, along the way, a little bit of, you know, not necessarily conscientiously, but I, I, again, my dad started out well. And I think when with my own kids, you know, my, I started out well and I think I finished well too, or we finished well with our kids. I feel like they're, you know, well functioning adults, um, not living in my basement, have, you know, good jobs as hard as that was to, when they got older to see them move away and, you know, it rips your heart out, but it's like, this is what's best for them. They need to go have their own, own lives. Um, but you know, all along the way we did our best to include our kids in things. You know, I didn't, uh, like when I built my fence, come on, we're going to go build the fence together. We're going to figure out how to do this together because I don't want you to, you know, I want you to, exp- not only I want the dad kid time, Uh, but also I want you to be, you know, empowered to be able to do this stuff for yourself when, when the opportunity comes. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, Hey, let's go learn how to build a fence. So that's kind of what, what I want to know is how, since your dad wasn't there, how did you learn to do things? Asked a lot of questions. (laughs) Uh, you know, I learned how to tie a tie from my roommate when I was 19. I learned how to uh, build a fence when I, I asked my brother, I talked to him for uh, quite a quite a while, just tried to get, gather as much information as I could. And I still do that to this day. And I try to slow it down. It's easy to go, ah, and then get overwhelmed and ah, I can't do this. Well, let's slow it down. Like I just showed how to put together a gate, you know, on my channel. And whenever you get a package of, you know, of a kit or something, it's so good to just you know, slow down, open up the package, lay everything out instead of, oh, this bag and that bag. And oh, I put that together. You take 10 minutes and you save yourself a lot of heartache. So I'm all about the planning. I think it's so important. I built a shed in my backyard too. And, you know, I went down and looked at Home Depot, looked at how they were built and, oh, okay. So I would need that brace and that sort of thing. And just ended up building it from scratch by, asking questions and doing research and then then jumping in you know you got to jump in eventually too <laughs> you can't you know do too much research and then never do it i know your daughter has helped you kind of with all of this how has she been in everything here oh she's been awesome she's uh i rely on her a lot and she's she tends to not give herself enough credit for how gifted she is in certain areas she's very good at recognizing things and, uh, you know, knowing how to get a message out and that sort of thing. And so, yeah, she's, she's very talented. I'm very, (laughs) very proud of her. Um, But you know, her, she's not, this isn't what anything she studied like Instagram or YouTube or, you know, she's just learned on her own because she actually, she's a board certified behavior analyst. Um, She got her master's degree um, to help kids. Uh, That was kind of her calling, even when she was little, she always kind of had a heart for kids like on recess. She was very athletic herself, but on recess, she would see the lonely kid and go over and befriend them and get to know them um, rather than hang out with the, the jocks. You know, she would kind of she had a heart for for people that were less fortunate. And now, yeah, interestingly enough, she that's what she does. She's a tutor for kids that, um, you know, need need some special help. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's the profession that she was kind of gifted in and she's, yeah, she's a great young woman. She's married. She's been married for, uh, eight years. Very good. It's always good to have that extra help there too. I know for Instagram, I had no idea what I was doing. So I'm always searching like Googling, how do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> I still don't. And I've come become reliant on her, but part of it is, you know, I'm still working. Uh, I haven't quit my job yet um, because I didn't plan on this thing becoming my new profession. I was just trying to help a handful of people. And so, you know, my wife and I are 57 and I don't want to pull up short. Um, And so I even shared a message on my channel about, you know, be careful when something looks amazing. You got to make sure, you know, slow it down, (laughs) slow it down and make sure that it's uh, something that is safe to jump to. Um, And so, you know, still trying to navigate that. So right now, you know, I've got sponsorships coming in. I've got podcasts, you know, I've got uh, a lot of media around Father's Day, especially. Um, And then I wrote a book um, and I've, you know, got TV opportunities that are I'm trying to navigate to. 
So, you know, juggling a lot, it's been, uh, it's been difficult. And so I've had to rely on her. And I've told her, I said, you know, it, I said, it's just so easy to rely on you. I said, <laughs> I said, I'm sorry that I'm doing this to you. But, and I said, you know, if I have a little more bandwidth, I'll tr- do my best to try to learn how to use Instagram. But right now I just don't have the bandwidth. Yeah. And then being, you know, we were isolated and sheltered previously and now, um, Things are going to be much more busy, I think, as we get back into everything. So, well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So my job is getting more demanding now because you know I was able to kind of coast a little bit um, and you know meet with customers remotely, but now I have to start going out and see, seeing customers again, which is a good thing. I, I you know I enjoy my job. That's why I haven't left. If it was a horrible job, I would have left a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I heard you say that, that, you know, you do still have your job. And I think that that's really good. And I hope that that, you know, the kids are listening when you say that, because it's not always greener on the other side. And like you said, definitely, you never know when the rug is going to be pulled from under you. So, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. (laughs) hopefully it's a good example for that, you know, Um, so people understand that there's, you know, some things might seem amazing. And I've had people even say, how do I become viral? You know, I. I didn't do this on purpose. I didn't, you know, so I don't know how to, <laughs> how you can become viral. <laughs> you know, I was just trying to help some people. And I think because of that and my backstory and the pandemic, I think it was kind of all things rolled together, caused the thing to, to be what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess the right place, right time, huh? <laughs> kind of. Well, uh, you know, uh, I wasn't looking to switch careers. That's the whole mm-hmm. thing. But now, now it is what it is. I'm trying to just navigate it to, you know, with integrity and trying to do the best that I can. Um, yeah, it was a timing thing, but it wasn't intentional. Sure. So. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you want to pass lessons on to people, I guess, just because it hits home with me is that is probably the best lesson to pass on is, is stick with what you got, you know, and, and keep doing, I, I guess, because, you know, I've, I've watched some channels from when they were babies to when they've grown. And then they, there's just like a switch that kind of happens. Um, kind of when you go to the dark side, I think, and you start. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, I really appreciate that you want to be like that true and steady, um, the steady guy there. So, well, right I think there. as a dad, you know, that's what I would want to pass along to my own kids. And so again, you know, trying to pass that along, I want, I want what's best for my own kids. And so I, you know, as I've adopted the internet, so to speak, I want to do the best I can to set a good example. So, so your dad left, you went to live with your brother. Did you ever reconnect with your dad at all? I did. Yeah. Um, you know, our relationship was superficial for a number of years. Uh, so we stayed connected, um, but never talked about anything and, um, my, you know, anything deep, uh, we would get together and go fishing and stuff. And finally my brother, Rick, the one I went to live with told my dad, cause he had kind of reconnected with my dad and had began writing letters to him and had told my dad that, Hey, you need to tell your kids you love them. And you need to tell them and ask for forgiveness. And my dad, I think my dad had kind of buried that. And so didn't really realize that he, that was something he needed to do, which is kind of sad. I think he had just kind of, you know, maybe the guilt was too much. And so he just numbed himself to it and didn't, uh, yeah, didn't feel like he needed to, which is sad um, because, you know, our relationship was always superficial because of that, you know, you never got to talk about anything that was actually meaningful we would get together and joke and you know be cordial but and i uh i share this in my book too i actually forgave my dad in my 40s um you know it took a long time uh to do that but i'm a man of faith and you know it took a i finally (laughs) realized you know um there was something i needed to do because the lord would want me to do that um i've been forgiven and so i needed to forgive my own my dad and then also somebody put it in the way that, you know, when you, unforgiveness is like drinking poison, hoping the other person is hurting. <laughs> and really, it was killing me. You know, it was actually it was painful to keep chewing on that and, you know, not setting my dad free from that. And so, yeah, so I actually forgave him in my 40s. And then it was in my 50s on a, uh, one of our fishing trips. My dad actually did ask for forgiveness, but I'd already forgiven him by that time. So it was a little anti, 
climactic. And I, I try to share pe- with people, you know, I try to encourage people to forgive because, and if you're waiting for that other person to actually ask you <laughs> for forgiveness, you might, might never get it. And so I think in your, it's in your own best interest to, to be able to forgive so that you don't keep bringing that into the, you know, they call it baggage for a reason. If you keep bringing that into the future, you know, everything's seasoned with that baggage that you're bringing in you got you got all this good stuff going on but oh i still got that thing i still got that thing i got to keep bringing into the future you know let it go shed the baggage and then you have you know you can enjoy enjoy the present and the future you're kind of cutting out again steph sorry what what'd you say about uh, something about the fishing trip yeah you were in your 50s when when that happened is that what you said yeah yep it was uh i was i think i was right around 50 uh yeah so, okay. and we went out and we were on a boat together. And like I said, I share the story in my, in my book and I, in my book, I actually, so I actually got to read um, the audio version of my book because it was, you know, so that's a whole nother experience so that I, again, was juggling, but also amazing, you know, uh, who knew I would be in a studio, you know, with a sound guy and a director, you know, walking through an audio book. Um, but that was, there was two parts that I cried. Um, uh, actually I ended up having to take five and cry, um, which was a little embarrassing in front of people I didn't know, but you know, it was such a personal story for me. This, the part where I forgave my dad, I started crying and then I cried another at another part. Cause my book is actually about, uh, it's a little, I think Amazon's a little confused by it. They call it a DIY, but it's actually, you know, first part I talk about forgiving my dad. And then I also talk about my siblings and how each of them had, uh, you know, effect an effect on my life. And I give one character trait from each one of my siblings. And I, so you kind of get it introduced to my siblings um, because at my 50th birthday, I went around to each of them and recognized them for one character trait that I felt was really strong in them. You know, they obviously got more than one character trait, but I (laughs) I picked one and kind of said, Mary, thank you so much because she was about family the importance of family. And then my brother, Tim, uh, was about, you know, having a backbone and standing up for yourself, um, questioning authority, which can be a little bit tricky because I don't mean to be a rebel, but you need to, you need to live your own life. And the way you only, the only way you can live your own life is to make your own decisions, not live somebody else's life. And so you, there's times where you got to go, I, I, that's not what I, I don't agree with that. Right. And so, and then my brother, Rick was about, the work ethic, having a good work ethic. And then my sister Lori was about being an encourager. Uh, my brother Joe was about not hesitating, you know, jumping, jumping into the pool is how we put it. Cause there's a story about him jumping into a, a pool uh, where we were, me and my brother Don were hesitating. And then my brother Don, I talk about um, uh, holding things with an open hand, being generous. And so when I was reading this is very personal for me. And um, I, I cried when my dad, you know, about my dad, forgiving my dad. And then I cried when my brother Don, um, he used to, there was something that he used to do that was amazing to me. He was 18 and I was 16 and he would, uh, you know, as a, this is a senior in high school, you know, uh, where you're kind of, <laughs> you want as much sleep as you possibly can, wake up the last minute, get, you know, last second, get to school. He would actually get up early and he didn't do this every day, but, you know, he to keep us connected, he would get up early, drive past our school, drive all the way over, pick me up from my brother's house and drive me to school. Pretty, pretty remarkable for somebody that age making that kind of sacrifice to keep us connected. Um, And that was, yeah, that was the other part that I ended up crying about when I was reading my audio book. And then also in the book, it, there's 50 how to's too to kind of get you, you know, a lot of the basic things. I think it's a, the book, I think actually should be more like a graduation gift um, or a, somebody going off to college, that type of thing. Cause it's kind of a, some character traits that I think would be valuable for anybody. And then also a lot of money type of stuff. How do you um, set a budget? How do you, you know, how do you pay your bills? a lot of that type of stuff. How do you invest too for down the road as well? And then I actually have, there's actually uh, 58 how to's cause I feel like to, it, another thing that as a dad, I always wanted my kids to learn was it's good to under promise and over perform. So I promise 50, I'm giving you eight additional ones so that, you know, you're getting more than, than I promised you. 
And then I have some dad jokes for you too. <laughs> yes, I want to hear some dad jokes. Really <laughs> no, no, really no, 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 that's book, fine. I think it's, it's helpful to understand what, what the book is actually about. I, and it's doing really well on Amazon. It you know has 74 reviews and it's averaging five stars. So it's resonating the way I would hope that it would. You know, it's always scary to put yourself out there. You don't know how people are going to re- receive it, but people are, are receiving it in a good way. So. Yeah. And I want to say that I was, um, I, I joined in a, it's called an adult orphan Facebook group and someone mm. had just lost their parents and they said, I just don't know how to do this. And, um, I was going to jump in and, and recommend you, but somebody had already done that. So I want to let oh. you know that it's not, you know, not just for the college age or the young kids, but you know, there are people, grown adults who have no parents who really just don't know where to turn. And, um, I think that they're going to be looking to you too. Yeah, well, thank you. I know. I, it, um, yeah, I mean, I, I have 80 year old kids. <laughs> uh, I've had people chime in and say, I'm your 80 year old daughter from wherever. And it's like, oh, OK, that's that's great. I'm, I'm happy to help anybody and everybody early on on my channel. People were thinking this is for young men. No, it's not. You know, certain things are how to shave, of course. I mean, I, you know, but I'm trying to help anybody and everybody. I want, you know, my kids to learn how to do stuff for themselves. You know, people have said on changing a tire, everybody should know how to change a tire. I, you know, you shouldn't, and people have said, oh, my dad said, you know, your husband will do that for you. Well, but what if your husband isn't around? What if you're driving and you get a flat tire and you're in a dark place? You should know how to do this, right? Uh, I think it's important for anybody and everybody to learn how to do this stuff. Definitely. Also, what if your husband doesn't know how to change a flat tire? <laughs> well, there, there is that too. Very good point. And then also, you know, some of my cooking videos, you know, I, oh, that's a mom thing. Well, really? You know, why would you limit yourself? You should know how to do as much as you possibly can. Why do you want to be reliant on somebody, you know, in a pinch if you don't, oh, I just got to wait for mom to get home. What? Learn how to wrap a present for yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of the things that I that really um, made me start my show is because I was thinking like, oh, well, we all have these questions that we want to ask, you know, like, oh, how do I do this? How, you know, things like this. So that's another reason why I really appreciate your show is that you are kind of answering those questions for everybody who might have them. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please consider sharing the show with a friend or rating and reviewing wherever you're listening right now. This will help get the word out about the show. And if one person can be helped by listening to someone's story here, that is amazing. If you would like to share your story with me, you can visit the website at www.backhomemedia.com slash parentlesspodcast. You can also email me at parentlesspodcast at gmail.com. Another way to get a hold of me is to find me on Instagram or Facebook, also at Parentless Podcast. And lastly, if you're a phone person, please leave me a voicemail at 623-396-6069. If you love the show and you'd like to help with any special projects that might go on at Parentless Podcast or just be privy to some special extras, go ahead and visit patreon.com slash Podcast. Do you ever have questions that you wish you could ask your dad? Uh, yeah, I think we all do. I, I, I think the sad thing for me uh, is that I never got to really talk about anything deep with my dad. You know, everything was always superficial. So I, I, those would be the more things that I wish I could ask my dad, honestly, that we could have been real and ask me anything, you know, and I, we've tried to have that relationship with our kids where we could talk about anything, you know, as even if it's hard, we should be able to talk about it, you know. So I think that's the main thing that I, I wish that I never, ever got to have with my dad that I wish I could have. When your dad passed away, did you have a close enough relationship with him at that time? Did you attend his funeral? Did you do all of that stuff? We did go to his funeral. Yeah, we went to his, it was a memorial where we went over and, you know, again, we were cordial. And so I wasn't, yeah, but I just wish we could have talked about deeper things, I guess, you know, because there's so much more, you know, uh, I wouldn't, I don't go, I wish I would have asked my dad how to work on a car. You know, I, I wish I could have asked him about what were you thinking here? You know, when you made that decision to do that, 
what was going through your mind, you know, I would have loved to have been able to, but it was always something that we couldn't really talk about. My dad's health wasn't great. He had heart issues. And then he had, he actually had a colostomy bag near the end of his life too, um, where he lost his colon. So he, yeah, he wasn't in the greatest of health. He was always put on this air of being strong, but he, uh, yeah, I think he, his health wasn't great. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned when you were doing your audio book that you cried in two separate places. Now, do you feel that, you know, we like to say it's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. Uh, we, we have to grieve. We have to go through it. Do you, how do you, how do you generally live your life? Are you, or you're more emotional or do you try to kind of hide your feelings? No, I, I think it's okay to cry, you know, I, I, and I probably do it more than I should. Um, but I think it's good to, to let people see you cry, but I still, you know, I'm, I'm human. So I, I feel, and then I beat myself up for it. There's a comedian, Bill Burr, that talks about, you know, thinking of something you did 10 years ago, you're in the shower and, oh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I can relate to that where, I, you know, I beat myself up for stuff. My, my daughter, graduated from uh, high school, I had put together this slideshow of her and our family and stuff. And so I spent the day doing that. And so I was a little bit emotional after kind of reliving her life up to that point. And so then, you know, we had a bunch of guests over, family members and stuff out in our backyard. And I started to talk about her. And then I started to read this book that meant something. And I just started sobbing in front of everybody. And so, you know, uh, I don't, that's, that's one of those cringe moments where I can still walk back in my backyard by the same part. Oh, that's right. That's where that happened. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I know that it's not that big a deal and people were very supportive and stuff. Um, but it's still, you know, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's okay to cry, but still it's doesn't mean that I don't still feel a little bit embarrassed by it. And you were in a room full of strangers. So of course. <laughs> yeah. What was your dad's name? Tom. Tom. And what was your mom's name? Barbara. I think it's very important to say their names just to kind of remember them that way as well. In that time period that you were around him when you were younger, did he have any, you know, sayings or dad jokes or anything that you just, that really, you remember? I don't really remember anything. I, he was, uh, you know, he'd take us camping and he'd take us fishing and he would play football with us. Uh, so there were a lot of good, good things with us, you know? Um, so I do, I do have fond memories of that. And then there's a period of time where my mind is kind of blocked where, I, you know, for protection, um, I kind of don't have great memories of a certain window of time. And so I've had to rely on my older siblings to say, no, what, what happened, what happened during this time? I, cause I don't, I don't recall it even with my mom and my dad there, you know, again, they started off great. And so for my first, probably eight years of my life, I have really good memories. Then you start getting into nine, 10, it starts getting a little hazy for me. I don't, I don't recall a lot. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite dad joke? Oh, I've got so many. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so uh, a satellite and an antenna got married. The wedding wasn't much, but the reception was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> very good and i recently heard your um your medium at large one that was that was really oh yeah <laughs> that's a newer one uh and then another one that uh rivals it is uh so my son said he didn't understand cloning i said that makes two of us <laughs> <laughs> You recently had a chance to talk to Kevin Hart. It's always interesting to see how, how things are set up from the other side. So that was, that was a good experience for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, mean, I thought it came across good. I'm glad I, I accomplished what I kind of wanted to accomplish and I got a dad joke out of him. Right. So. Yeah. It was a good one. Do you want to share yeah. it here? <laughs> how do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie in it. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that one. That's yeah. 
Yeah. I noticed in um, in watching your videos, can you explain you did your take on things? So I thought those were just great uh, life lessons as well. Do you want to kind of just run down those really quick for us? Yeah, if I can remember what each of them stand for. <laughs> Uh, let me think. So it, I did it so that I could remember it. Um, the T stands for being true to yourself because, you know, early on in my channel too, I had people, cause I, at the end of my videos, I would say, and God bless you, you know? And then I had people say, Oh, um, you know, you probably shouldn't say that. I'm like, you know what? Uh, if that offends you, then I'm sorry. I'm sure you've heard worse, you know? Um, and that's who I am. And so I'm not going to, change uh just to accommodate a few when a lot of other people love hearing it too and plus it's who i am you know so being true to yourself so that yeah i did put the acronym of take so be true to yourself uh is the t and then a is i believe it was don't get ahead of yourself because it's easy to future trip um you know you start thinking about what could be or what you know, uh, even bad things, you know, oh, no, that might happen. Or, well, you know, you got to stay kind of in the present so that you don't get ahead of yourself. I think it's just good life advice. And then the K was being kind to yourself, kind and good to yourself. Um, you know, I when my channel first went viral, I, uh, you know, uh, I, I kind of got caught up in it too, where I got out of a rhythm of, I get up in the morning and I pray and spend some time alone time, you know, and I've got away from that. And so I had to get back to that where the first thing I do isn't to pick up my phone and see, you know, how many likes I got or how many new subscribers or what the comments are, you know, you can get, get caught up in that. And I needed to, you know, slow it down and kind of regroup and think, okay, no, I need to, I need boundaries to, you know, so that I can do this properly. Yeah. And then uh, the E was uh, enjoy the ride. You know, I need to be in the moment so that I could kind of enjoy things too, you know, because this, you know, you don't know how long things are going to last. It cut, might be temporary. And so I want to be able to, you know, enjoy the moment as I'm going along. So that was an article. Yeah. So the take came from an article that I wrote for Fatherly Magazine. They um, reached out to me and wanted me to come up with an article on what it's been like being the internet's dad, they called me. And I always shy away from that. I don't, you know, I, I, I think it's a little arrogant to say, hey, I'm the internet's dad. And so I've always tried to downplay that, you know, um, I'm just trying to you know, do the best I can. And people have called me the Mr. Rogers of the next generation. And, you know, again, trying to downplay that, you know, nobody could <laughs> live up to that. Mr. Rogers was yeah. one of a kind and a unique person for the time that he lived to, you know, so um, I'm just trying to be the best that I best me that I can be. I'm not Mr. Rogers. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's kind of the thing is, is nothing about you changed. You didn't do anything different to do this. You were just being you. And then this mm -hmm. happened to you. So I think it's, it's very important that, yeah, that you, I like how you're trying to keep your message the same, which I've already said, but I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important. I actually ended up writing a mission statement to try to stay on, on track. And I've even tried to encourage, you know, um, this just came up and I don't know how much I can say, but uh, who I shared this with, but I was talking to some dads and talking about, uh, you know, writing a mission statement for your family too. You know, when you're, when you first, you know, we do that for business, you know, when you start a business, Oh, I'm an, this is what I want my core principles and this is what I'm going to do. And you try to stick to them and then you modify them as you go along, right. For a business plan. Well, when you have a kid and you hold that kid for the first time and you're promising them the world, write that down, you know, write down the things that you so you can stay on track so that when it's tough, you know, the life gets a little bit tough and you're dealing with different things. That's right. I got to I got to get back on track here. I'm, I'm kind of lost my way because I want to make, you know, being a dad to the best of my ability with whatever, you know, if I can encourage one dad to understand that being dad, being a dad is cool. It's cool. You know, it's a, it's such a great responsibility, but enjoy it too. You know, it's, uh, it's so much fun and my kids are grown now and, you know, now they're my peers and we're constantly talking about different things. And like I said, my daughter 
you know, helps me all the time with stuff that I don't know how to do. Um, so it goes back and forth now. And then my son too, we talk about deep things and, you know, I proud of both of them. Good. I like that you mentioned that you talk about deep things because that's something that you really wanted from your relationship with your dad and, and you're making sure that you and your son have that. So that's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I'm, yeah. I talked about my daughter a lot. I got to tell you, I'm proud of my son too. He's, <laughs> uh, he's over in Virginia. He got a job opportunity and there's a story in the book, in my book about him. Um, he got, he's a software engineer and he was struggling to get his, uh, you get a job. Um, and so he, and we talked about it and he said, you know, this is, he kind of came up with this plan and he went around, he printed out his resume and he went around handing out his resume to these different places. Cause he was doing it online and wasn't getting anywhere. And so he was, after he graduated a couple months, he was getting impatient. And so he came up with this plan and he went out and just told people I'll work for free. You know, if you hire me and take a chance on me, I'll even work for free. And, there's one place that just about hired him for free. <laughs> they took him up on it. So they hired him as a contractor and paid him nothing uh, for six months. But because of that, then they ended up hiring him full time and he made decent money. And now he got a great job offer out in Virginia where he's making very good money and doing great. Um, but um, I talk about busting that log jam. You know, if you're stuck, you got to think outside the box and go, what can I do to free this up so that I can get this thing moving again? And that's what he did. Right. And if you don't ask, you never know. Yeah, right. Who would have thought to ask to work for free? (laughs) But yeah, that's amazing. Well, he, uh, yeah, and he has people that, so he graduated, what, uh, three years ago? I think three years ago uh, from college and he's got people that graduated that were smarter than him. And he said, this guy was always the best in the class. He's the guy still doesn't have a job working mm-hmm. in that field. He isn't working in the field yet. And my son's already moved on and he's yeah doing great. So I like to talk about therapy because that's a, that's a big part sometimes in our lives. So have you ever been to therapy? I have. Yep. There's an online uh, version. I've also gone to uh, my pastor to, um, Yep. I, again, trying to encourage people. I, I I don't really have one that I can necessarily feel good about endorsing uh, an online therapy place. Uh, but yeah, I've, I think it's, it's very important to, and I shared that in a, I read a book recently and just talked about that. It's important, you know, um, and if nothing else, at least talk to a friend, you know, find a friend, <laughs> friend to share if you're struggling with stuff, you know, um, and then maybe they can point you. Hopefully it's a good friend that can point you and not make you feel embarrassed by feeling like you need some help because yeah. And that's, again, if I can help even a small amount of people understand that it's not, anything to be ashamed about if you're struggling with something it's you know it's pretty normal it's it, it, but people don't people don't want to act like it's normal but it's pretty normal that you know most of us struggle at some point or another and it's important to get help that's something too that there's maybe therapy available but you know not everybody is able to access it do you have any books or resources like that that you want to share with everybody I, I don't know that I necessarily, I mean, I've read a lot of different books. I think it's important to talk to somebody for me. I mean, that, that has been big. Here's one thing that's a little interesting and I don't want to, you know, act like this is would cure everybody and anybody, but one thing that's helped me um, a pill is magnesium for my anxiety. I know this is sounds really, really strange, but I've struggled with getting up in front of people and talking and that sort of thing. And I, um, so I went to my doctor and I talked to him, you know, and he gave me, he gave me Endurol, which is a drug, um, didn't really help me. And then he actually gave me Xanax that didn't help me. All it did was put me to sleep. And then my, I was talking to my daughter and she said, she has a friend that was, uh, what is this? Pharmacist. I can never think of that word pharmacist. And he said, um, magnesium. Um, and so, I thought, well, I, it's worth a try. And so I actually take magnesium every night and it, it really, really has helped me 
I, I don't even know. Uh, but it's funny. So I went back to my doctor and I said, you know, one thing that's really helped me is this magnesium. And he goes, oh, I highly recommend magnesium. I'm like, you didn't recommend it to me, though. <laughs> you forgot to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have me on these other drugs. And yeah, I don't I mean, think it, he gets paid from the magnesium company is the thing. Um, so why yeah. is he going to recommend it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that right. is awesome. I haven't really heard that before. So just just one one a day. Of course, we're not doctors. Yeah. But, no, um, I'm not, I, I just have to. I feel like there's certain things that have happened to me in my life. And it's like, man, if I can throw that out there just to see if that might help somebody. Um, yeah. Because that's here's another thing, too. Is since we're talking about drugs, um, aspartame. Uh, I used to get migraine headaches because I used to drink a lot of Diet Coke. And then somebody told me aspartame isn't really good for you. So I cut out the aspartame. I mean, I went to the doctor. I went, I had brain, you know, my brain scanned. I had all kinds of different tests and stuff. And then I cut out aspartame and my, I haven't had a migraine since. I used to lose vision in an eye from, from it. Um, yeah. So anyway. Just there, wow. as stuff comes up like that, I try to share my own experience. If it helps you, great. If it doesn't, then at least it's worth a try without, you know, spending a whole lot of money. Yeah, yeah. And if if you um if you have that knowledge, why not pass it on? Amazing. Right, yeah. and I'm not going to pretend the magnesium's a you know a cure all for anybody. But for me, with my anxiety, there's something that I was missing, and that magnesium has helped me tremendously. It's kind of funny that you say that you had problems speaking in front of people and now uh, many people watch you. So <laughs> <laughs> I share that in my book. I share it in my book of, you know, not wanting to um, fight or flight, man. I just want to run. I, I don't. And I share the struggle of getting because I was number one in sales for my um, division uh, a few years ago and that was asked to speak. And I could have just let that opportunity pass me by. But, you know, I needed to finally realize I, I can't, and I don't think the Lord would want me to keep, <laughs> you know, letting that affect me. It's like, I got to overcome this. And so the easy thing would have been to say, no, I, I don't want to speak. And, but I, I finally, I did. And then it was killing me up before the conference when I had to actually get up and speak and, I'm so glad I did because now it's kind of taken, you know, I'm still going to get nervous, but I, I know I got that to tap into to know that I, I can do it if I need to. Yeah. And I bet it went well, right? It did. Yeah, actually. And again, sure. In my book, um, my sales manager afterwards said, uh, Rob, I feel like we have a, this prize racehorse kept in the barn and we never let him out. And she said, you did, <laughs> you did so good. So yeah, that was very, very encouraging. Mm-hmm. Like, what would you tell younger Rob today? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've had that asked of me before. I, I think um, probably to be uh, maybe be kind to yourself, you know, to understand that you're not going to be you're not going to have it all figured out. But nobody else does either. <laughs> so I think it's easy to, you know, think that everybody else has it put together and you're the one, only one that's struggling. You know, I think uh, we all tend to put on a good front. Uh, you know, and so understanding that, you know, we all have issues that we're dealing with. You're not the only one. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Everybody has something, no matter, they can be the most put together person and then they, <laughs> there's going to be something. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's totally true. And I do try to share that too, you know, be kind to people because you just don't know what people are going through. You know, people can put on this good front of they got it all together. You don't know, you know, mm -hmm. they you don't, uh, I, Again, shared in my book of uh, the story of if you, um, you know, if we all got together and we put our problems out there, you know, we all got in a circle and we put our problems out there. Most of the time you'd be picking your own problems back up when you see what other people are going through. Uh, I think I think it's just important. It's important to keep that in the front of your mind that people you just don't know what people are going through. Well, we talked about if you had anything that you would say to your dad. So would there be anything that you would say to your mom if you had the chance? Yeah, I, uh, I was able to thankfully, um, you know, reconcile with my dad. I, I wasn't able to reconcile with my mom, unfortunately. So I wish, you know, I could ask for forgiveness, maybe how I treated her. I, you know, I didn't treat her horrible. I was just trying to figure out life and... Yeah, there was a time in my 20s and stuff where I didn't 
you know, probably wasn't as nice to her as I could have been. I didn't, I, because, you know, again, I guess at the time I was dealing with the fact that, oh, my parents kind of let me down, you know? And so she was struggling with her mental health and with her um, alcoholism. And she'd put herself in situations that were it's like, I got to bail you out of this. You know, I, I, so I didn't have a whole lot of compassion for her and my heart goes out to her. I wish we could have reconciled before she passed. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that is something that I carry around with me that I wish, you know, I was able to, and I never related to her as an adult, you know, things change when you're, when you get older, you know, with your parents, hopefully they do anyway, where you can talk to them on a different level. And I, you know, I never got to experience that with my mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's, it's so easy to look back and, and have those regrets and be down on ourselves, but you were doing what you could do with what you were given at the time. Um, so I think it's, it's really important to remember that as well. So. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, I, I do. I, I, I think I have a pretty healthy perspective of things, but still, you know, if I if given the opportunity, I wish I could have. Yeah. Sure, uh, talk to her again about that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, is there anything that we haven't shared or talked about today that you would like people to know? I don't know. I think we talked about a lot. So <laughs> I think we covered just about everything, you know, trying to yeah, encourage kindness. And like you said, mental health, trying to encourage people to get help. Um, and it's nothing to be ashamed of because we all, you know, and kind of with my channel too, I'm trying to give people a little nudge to give you a little help to, you know, to empower people. Um, I think also mental health is important to, to be able to empower empower people so you can get things, you know, back on track so you can, you know, enjoy life. Cause I know that there's people going through a lot of difficult things and, you know, if you don't see a way out of it, please get help. Will you let us know how people can contact you? Yeah. So I have my YouTube channel, uh, you know, YouTube um, slash dad. How do I, or you can go to dad. How do I at gmail.com. I'm also on Instagram dad. How do I on Instagram? So, and then I have uh, dad, how do I official.com uh, <laughs> got lots of different ways you could actually uh, get a hold of me. Um, yeah. And we actually sell a few, few items on my channel too. I'm dad, how do I official.com where okay. um, and that, that gives you a link to my book too. Um, when you first go to dad, how do I official uh, the pop-up will um, allow you to buy my book. We are doing our best to, to help people and provide a resource that I wish I would have had when, when I was younger, that's kind of what the channel is. You know, it's something trying to put it all in one place where these are a lot of little things that will hopefully help, help somebody. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Rob. I enjoy your videos. I definitely need them because I, I don't know how to do things like that. Yeah. Ha happy to be a resource. All right, Rob. Thank you so much. And you take care. Okay. All right. Thanks, Steph. Parentless Podcast is recorded in Phoenix, Arizona. Find us on social media and most major podcast platforms. Music provided by Colin Lococo and The Revolving Birds. Studio and editing provided by Back Home Media and Ian Relaford. Check out one of the many shows on our network. I am your host, Stephanie Relaford. <laughs>